Hello, Jim Hodges here, Leo here. Leo is a 16-month-old Shih Tzu that came in for our residency training program. Of course, the primary focus of the residency training program is obedience, but obedience is used to address behaviors. In Leo's case, he has a severe form of separation anxiety. Severe meaning, you know, normal things haven't really helped it. It's no fault of the owners. They actually adopted him when he was about five, six months of age from a breeder. I can only imagine that uh, he was sheltered, maybe kept in a certain place. Whatever the case may be is he doesn't like it when his owners leave. In fact, he's been the same way with us, although it has improved over time. You know, one of the things I'll say, obedience can help with that. Why? Because when we can call the shots for our dogs, we can tell them what to do. They understand instinctively that we are the leader and that we can control the environment. And hopefully our dogs will become uh, more confident and secure in the pack. Now, of course, we've done that. Are we going to completely remove separation? No. Are there things our owner's going to have to do? Yes. And we're going to address those uh, when they come to pick him up. We've actually already started talking about these things. It's not black and white. I wish it is. But uh, you'd have to go through different things. But anyway, we have done the obedience. I want to share the obedience. I want to share where we are with him. Uh, and we'll go through obedience. I'm still going to expect him to do everything any other dog would do. I may use a couple of more treats to try to excite him, get him encouraged. But watch how I do the treats. At the end of the day, he obeys me because I ask him to do something. And we're not here to intimidate, dominate, break a spirit, hurt him, or have him fear us. That's even more important when we have a dog that has anxiety issues like this. Okay, you ready, Mr. Leo? Let's go. Listen to my tone of voice. Good boy. Atta boy, let's go. All right, let's go as he's walking with me. Life beside me on a leash. In most instances, I tell people that if our dog starts to pull, we tap right back to our side. Just a little, little tap. We're not here to intimidate, dominate, break a spirit, hurt him or harm him but we are going to be physical with our reactions, okay? In his case, at least with me, it could be different with the owners, is I'm trying to encourage him to walk up with me and get him excited. Of course, he's a little dog. I take big steps. I tend to be a little faster than normal, but I'm going to encourage him to be with me. Let's go. Atta boy. And when he's walking, good boy. And when he's walking to me, atta boy. That's such a good boy. Let's go. So I'm not going to crack or tap the leash up on him. I'm going to encourage him up. I'm only going to tap the leash if he gets away from my side or starts to pull. Okay? Let's go. Sit. Hand signal for sit. He's supposed to sit. Atta boy. I love it when he watches me. Sit means sit. He has to hold that sit until I release him. If he didn't sit or if he started to get up, it would be a little tap. No, sit, and then good boy. The good boy is not as good as if he did it right the first time, but it does let him know that my intention is for him to hold this sit. So when I break him in just a second, you're going to see a hand signal. Here's the hand signal for sit, but I'm teaching him the recall, and I'm teaching him to want to come to me. Break. Atta boy. Hands are right here. That's going to be the same with the come or the recall. Got to look at me to get it. Good boy. Little cut, pat, praise. Good boy, break. So that when I break him, again, I am just trying to teach him that safety, comfort is with me. So I'm going to release him and have him come to me. All right, buddy, let's go. Good boy. Hand signal for set. Here we go. And remember, if he didn't do it, I would tap up on the leash, tough, and say no with the tap, and then sit. Down. Good. Down is the same way. My hand signal from in front tells him to down. If I was beside him, my hand signal would be like this. I will demonstrate that again. Down means down. I want him to hold that down. I could actually tell him to stay, and that means pack your bags. You're going to be there a while. You can chew on something. You can roll over. You can sniff. You can chew on a toy. I don't care, but he's in that down. You see he likes to do the down? Eh, not so much. Uh, he was very, very uh, willfully strong with us to begin with in doing obedience, which could be, of course, because of his situation. Not really 100% certain, 
but we work through it. He's pretty happy with doing most of his obedience now. So let's go. Down. Good boy. Sit. Atta boy. Did you notice? Good boy. Right. Have a used to treat. I think I'm going to give him a treat in a minute. Again, did you notice my tone of voice? Calling him from that uh, sit, to, from the down to come up into the sit command. Really powerful to do that. We are trying to create that emotional, spiritual bond, if you will, with our dog. And when we're happy, we're going to have a smile on our, on our face. And studies have been shown that if we smile with our dog, our dog's bond grows stronger, okay? Now I'm going to do the uh, C-O-M-E command. I actually have a treat in my hand, but not necessarily that he knows it. You notice I don't have a bag. I've got treats, treats, treats right here. I can pull them out at any time. Remember, I like to use treats. I like to reward my dogs. In the beginning, I'll use it to teach and lead and bribe, if you will, to get them to do what I want. After they learn, I still like to give treats from time to time. With a dog like this, I'll tend to give treats a little more often than normal just to try to help encourage him. But if I don't have a treat, if I have a treat, he's got to do it. If I was going to give him a treat for a command coming up here in just a second and he didn't do it, he's not going to get the treat. He's got to do it right to get the treat, not halfway. The only time he can halfway get a treat is when he's learning and he's trying. Once he learns, that goes out the window. Okay, buddy. Good boy. Right here. Good. Let's go. Sit. All right, watch the hand signal. Come. He comes. Again, that's a lot like the break. He sits there and holds it. And a boy, and I'm going to wait for him to look at me. Good boy. When he came, he sat. He's still holding that sit. Break. He doesn't get up. To come, he comes to sit. With my owners, I don't care if he sits or not. You decide, as long as he comes to you. You notice with both the, good boy, the break and the come command, where did my hands go? Right here. I'm trying to get him to focus and come to me here. Not out here, not out here, because out here there could be things that could startle him or distract him. I want him to focus on coming to me and I'm going to praise him. If he does something right or wrong, he's going to do that over and over. That's the way dogs learn or condition themselves, okay? So if it's right, put a word to it, you've got a new command or a trick. If it's wrong, set it up and know the next time you've got to be ready to provide that consequence. Again, people should know by now about what I mean by consequence. We're not trying to hurt a dog, but dogs do live in a physical world. Watch two dogs together. Watch dogs when they interact. Yes, sometimes they'll bark, but more times than barking, they'll be uh, jumping, bumping, growling, being very physical with each other. That's what I want to do. But I never want to bite or provide a consequence that can hurt or go through that intimidate, dominate uh, items that I said just a second ago. All right, let's go. Come on, bud. Let's go. Down. Good boy. Good boy. Break. Atta boy. Let's go. Again, come on. Now we're going to do the, all right, let's go. Come on, right here. Right in. Atta boy, way to watch me. Good. So you notice I didn't have a treat in my hand. Good boy. Right. I waited for him to do it the way I wanted. I started praising him and I came out and I gave him the treat. What did I do when I gave him the treat? I told him good boy and pet and loved him. I want words, touch, treat, toy to try to be used as much as we can synonymous at the same time. That allows us to tell our dog no three months from now, for example, and he's going to think we bit him if we've been physical with our touch when we go to consequence. Break. Let's go. Good boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Good boy. Sit. Good. Good boy. So now we're going to do the heel command. The heel command is when he's in a box beside us, an imaginary rectangular box. It's our job to keep him in that box. It's his job to stay in the box. If he gets out of the box, that means if he starts to lag behind, this will be the time that I may tap him. I'll try to encourage him. If that work, I might, doesn't work, I may tap him. But when I stop, he should sit automatically. In the beginning with all dogs, you should use a treat. I'll use a treat like this. See the treat? I typically put it right here, get his attention, let him see I have a treat. My hand signal is like this, so I have it to reward. Okay? Not going to use the treat right now. So you ready? Heel. We heal. 
We stop, he sits, at a boy. And then he holds that sit until I release him. Good boy. So we're gonna do it again and I'm gonna turn. Heel, step off. His job is to come back into the box. Now here, little tap, good boy. Stop and turn, good. Now, down. I can go to another obedience command if I want to do it. He's got to do it. Good boy. Break. Right here. Break. Add a boy. Good. Right here. There you go. Good boy. Notice how I give a treat. Break. This is for all dogs. I don't give a treat like this. I give it like this. It encourages our dog to nicely take the treat out of her hand, and then I can rub right up and pet and love him. Okay? Come on, buddy. Let's go. One more time. Come on, buddy. Right here. All right. Look up. Ah, ooh, what a boy. I will give him a treat for that. Good boy. That's a good boy. Right. Good boy. You're doing good. 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 Right. Let's go. Come on. Atta boy. So you see my voice is trying to pick him up and keep him excited. We want him to enjoy doing this. When you work with your dog, a minute, two minutes, 30 seconds, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You could go on an hour walk in and mix uh, training within it, okay? Little blip here, little setter down here, just so our dog understands we control all aspects. Again, the separation is something that's real hard to deal with. One thing that I didn't mention in the beginning, I'm not big on chemical uh, treatment, you know, medication. For separation. Unfortunately, there's some extreme situations that it has to be done, but I would recommend that that's always a last resort, okay? Hopefully, we're not going to be there. We're going to see. When he goes home, he's going to go right back to trying to do some of the things he was doing, but hopefully, he's going to spend a little more time in the crate just to begin with. We're going to feed him in the crate, and we're going to sort of start to ignore him. Another thing that's real important for separation is when we do leave, we change our routines. Because so many times we do the same things, we're creatures of habit over and over and over every day, and our dogs start to cue in on it. And if it's a worry, they start to get worried. One other thing is sympathy and empathy are wonderful traits that God gave us humans, but it is not good to show sympathy and empathy to a dog. It's a sign of weakness, and we may be rewarding behavior that we do not intend to reward. So you try your best to praise for the good things, keep the, the uh, worries as non-existent that he can see or feel as possible. Thank you so much. You know, if you need me, pick up the phone and give me a call. Uh, Jim Hodges Dog Training, 336-945-3232. Facebook, Jim Hodges Dog Training, or jimhodgesdogtraining.com. Thank you and God bless.